coming to you from a rainy afternoon in May. Uh, the good news is, as I look out my window, I don't see any snow, which is cool. Uh, my colleagues up north, however, I think still have some snow covering. But this is our 2 o'clock Facebook Live. Uh, we want to help break up the day for folks sheltering in place by offering some diversions. So on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and sometimes Sunday, if you join in at 2 o'clock, you'll see Chris cooking some very interesting dishes. On Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I'm doing an iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and Mac informational presentation. So today we're going to do Apple Photos app editing tools part two. So let's get started. Again, uh, what I'm going to be talking today relates to the, the Mac computers and laptops, your iPhone, and your iPad. Now, if you're tuning in, I really suggest you have your device with you so you can follow, follow along. When I sh demonstrate or show you a slide that talks about brilliance in adjustments, then you can go and try it out on one of your own photos. Now, I have to tell you, depending on what device you're using and the version of your software, sometimes your screen is not going to look exactly like mine. But if you just look around, I think you will find the items that I'm referring to. And of course, the images, the photos, will not be the same because they're my photos, not yours. So here's the schedule on this particular uh, group of Facebook Lives. So Tuesday, this past Tuesday, we did part one of editing tools and we talked about autocorrect, cropping, and filters. If you're interested in viewing that, you can go one of two places. You can go to the Boomer Tech Adventures YouTube channel or you can just stay on this page and scroll down and you will find the video because the Facebook Lives, if they go without hitch, are always recorded and uh, put up for view at a later time. Today, as I said, we're going to be looking at uh, Editing Tools Part 2, in which case we're going to be looking at adjustments, talking about exposure, color, and lots of other things, plus markup, which is kind of fun. Saturday, uh, we're going to focus on the organization of the Photos app and albums, creating them, maintaining them, etc. And this will be specific to Macs. There's enough difference between the Mac version of Photos and the iPhone, iPad version that it gets confusing to keep going back and forth when we're talking about organization and albums. So then on Tuesday, I will do uh, talk about organization albums specifically to iPhone and iPad. All right. So if you have your device and you open the Photos app, you're going to see one of the following two screens. If you are on a laptop or a desktop, you will probably open up to a bunch of thumbnails, or you may open to one particular picture. It depends what you were doing the last time you were on the Photos app. But what I want to point out is that your menu is on the left-hand side. It starts up with Photos and goes all the way down the left-hand side. Now, if you're on your iPhone or iPad, it looks completely different. This is what you see. Again, you will either see some thumbnails of photos you've taken or you may see just one picture. But what's important to know is your menu is down at the bottom where it says Photos for You Albums Search. That menu is what I'm going to be talking about next Tuesday. So. What I need you to do if you're following along with uh, a device is you need to bring up one image. Just tap or click on any of your thumbnails. And so you have one image on your screen. Again, with your menu on the Mac on the left, 
and uh, a menu on the bottom for iPhones and iPads. Now we're going to go to the editing mode. You find that on your laptop and desktop in the upper right hand corner. You can see the blue arrow pointing to the tiny little word that says edit. And on the iPhone and iPad on the right, actually edit is also in the upper right hand corner where the arrow is pointing. Now, if you happen to have an older phone, like an iPhone 4, you may not see the word edit. You may be looking for the symbol that you see down there in the bottom, three parallel lines with three bubbles. Apple for a year or two used that symbol instead of the word edit. Uh, so it depends, again, which phone you're using, but you should be able to get to the edit mode. So once you click on or tap on edit, this is again what you'll see. If you're on a Mac, you see a screen something like this. And on Tuesday, we looked at cropping and filters. But today we're going to look at adjustments. So if you see right in the middle of the top screen, I've clicked on adjust and it's lighter. And then down the right hand side, there is all sorts of choices. So that's what you want to do if you're on a Mac or you're on a laptop. Make sure you tap, click on that adjust. If you're on the iPad or iPhone, uh, you don't have to click on anything. Once you get to editing, you will see all the tools we're going to use down the right. So the adjustments look like this. Again, on the Mac, there's the whole menu. And you will notice that each topic has a little arrow. And I have most of them all closed up, which means the arrow is pointing towards the right. But if you looked at selective color, you will see that the arrow's pointing down. That's because I click, clicked on it, and that means I have more choices. So again, if you're playing, if playing on a Mac or a la uh, Mac laptop or desktop, just click on those different arrows so you see what they do. On the iPhone, iPad, over to the right, it's a little different. It's a sliding scale. So as you slide your finger down through those icons, you will see the word will change and it will tell you what it is. And then to the right is a sliding scale where you do your adjustments. So just familiarize yourself if you're using your device which whatever uh, menu fits your situation. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at are light adjustments. And these are the same options on both the Mac and the iPhone. And you can see them listed there. It has a variety of things from contrast to exposure to brilliance. And again, if you're on your iPhone or iPad, you'll be running your finger down that little uh, list of icons and you will see these words appear. Well, we better talk about definitions first. Now, I'm sure everybody understands that exposure means that it's giving us control over the overall brightness and darkness of our total image. So what's cool about exposure is if, for example, I'm photographing today on this dull gray, do dull gray day, uh, and I take a picture and it comes out really dark, when I go into editing, I can change that up a little bit by working with the exposure. Brightness refers specifically to making darker errors, areas lighter and bringing out the details in those darker areas. So once again, that's a real attribute to be able to make your picture better. Contrast, again, we all know what contrast is. It's simply adjusting the contrast and colors in the image, and it will sharpen the definition between colors of, of similar hues. So if you have sky blue next to something that maybe is a turquoise blue, it will help you uh, sharpen the definition so that it doesn't look muddy or messy. 
So what does this look like in reality? Okay, here's an original picture. You can probably tell from the color of uh, the houses. Uh, I was on the Mediterranean. I was in Cinque Terre, Italy a couple years ago. And it's not an awful picture, uh, but I, when I remember it, I'm thinking that the colors were much brighter on those houses, even as pretty as they are in this kind of uh, dull, washed out picture. So I went into my editing tools and I worked with just exposure, brightness, and contrast. Well, I did crop too, I had too much water. And I think, in my humble opinion, this is a better image. The colors of those wonderful Mediterranean pastel buildings are brighter. The green is more intense on the hillside. And I personally just like this picture better than that one. Same picture though. Now, remember, none of us are professional photographers. Uh, we, most of us are not entering our photos into a contest. And so really what we like is in our eyes, not trying to please somebody else. And so the operative word, I think, is to go in and play with these adjustments. So what I decide I like as my final image, somebody sitting next to me might not agree and might have emphasized something else, and that's okay. You know, photographers, professional photographers, those beautiful pictures we see on the internet or in magazines, those are not the first take. They have been edited back in their dark rooms. So editing is just one of the tool sets of a photographer, whether a professional, an amateur, or a just for fun person like me. So let's go on to some more definitions. Brilliance, highlights, and shadows. Now, as you look at these three things, they're all about details. Brilliance will, again, brighten up those dark areas. It will add some contrast to make the, the picture, the image, more dramatic, more eye-catching. The highlights focuses on those lighter areas as opposed to shadows, which when you are working that slider, will bring out the details in the darkened areas. And again, whether you're on an iPhone, iPad, or you're on your Mac, you're working that slider that goes with this particular item, whether it be brilliance, whether it be exposure, and you can see a change. Again, what does this look like? Okay, so here's another picture. I'm just a little bit further down the coast and in Italy, and this is really washed out, overexposed, uh, must have been hazy that day. Uh, not, I mean, it's, it's a nice enough picture that I look at it, and I'm telling you, I'm looking at my cloudy, gray, cold April morning, and I look at that picture, and I'm transported back to Italy, no question about it, but I think I can make it better. So I went into editing, and this time I adjusted just for brilliance, highlights, and shadows. And again, this is not an award-winning picture, but I like it much better than the original. It is not as uh, washed out. Again, those wonderful pastel colors of the Mediterranean buildings are brighter and more vibrant. Uh, I think the green is brighter, the shadows, uh, on that hillside to the right are more defined. So I am much happier with this picture. And if I'm sharing it with friends or texting it to somebody, I'm gonna be much happier with it. Now, I wanted to bring this up even though I don't have an example to show you. I'll be reading about editing and it'll all, I'll see these things that'll say, well, this is the way the photographer can reduce the noise in their pictures. And I'm going, reduce the noise. My pictures aren't talking to me. They aren't videos. What does that mean? Well, when I did a little bit of research, evidently they use the word noise. The professionals use the word noise when there's some visual distortion. And evidently it happens mostly in low light settings. 
and as I read, they did the author did make reference to decibels, etc. I really didn't want to go into that much detail. Uh, so if you're really interested in the technical end of noise reduction, then I suggest that you do a little research on the internet and you'll find all sorts of explanations. But again, I'm the kind of person I want to put my key in my car and have it go. I don't need to know what's working under the, the hood. Uh, so the same with noise reduction. Uh, I play around with it a little bit, but I haven't seen for my, um, my expertise, which really doesn't, isn't able to uh, identify it very well in my own pictures. This is, this is all I need to know. I can play around with it, see if it makes a difference. Okay. Let's go on to one more of the other uh, adjustments, which has to do with color. Now on the Mac, you will see that your choices have to do with hue and saturation. If you look over on the iPhone iPad, as you move your finger down those icons, you see some of them get more colorful than the black and white. And again, saturation is there. Uh, and you see again that slider to the right of the icons and you can move it up and down and add uh, work at the saturation of the color in your picture and uh, the hue what what colors what hues are being emphasized again have fun with it let me show you what I did so on the right I'm sorry on the left is a picture from the Yellowstone area and uh, actually I like this picture uh, it picked up the the kind of the rosy colors of the rock and it showed the water that was pretty uh, rough pretty good kayaking down there I guess if you're a thrill seeker etc but I was curious about hue and saturation so I went into the editing tools and I played around and look at the difference now I don't like the picture on the right but I used it to demonstrate how you can change the overall feeling or uh, sense of what your picture is all about from going from on the original kind of rosy pinkish rock I now have kind of a sickish green rock uh, so you really have some choices there again what colors and how you uh, represent those colors in your images so again just showing you the difference of what you can do with hue and saturation again you just got to go in and play now Mac has touch up which means that you can get rid of some unwanted things so to demonstrate that on the left you will see uh, this gray stone walkway and it has probably two utility um, not manholes but uh, entry points so I was curious could I get rid of them so I went in on touch up and you can see I got rid of on the first swipe I got rid of the uh, entryway on the the right side there now it looks a little distorted well let me show you what you do about that so I'm gonna go on so here's another picture it's an original and uh, let's say I don't like that cloud up there in uh, the upper left hand corner so I went to touch up and you can see the first pass uh, I got rid of most of it but there's still like a ghost there so on the second pass I got rid of that ghosty feeling but there's just a hint you can if you look closely there's just a hint that there was something white there and on the third pass I've pretty much eradicated that cloud now what do I mean by pass well unfortunately I can't go live on Facebook live uh, to show you but when you click on face when you click on touch up you can um, adjust how much how big you want the touch up to be and then when you put your cursor up on the place where the uh, you're going to try to eradicate something a circle appears 
and you move that circle around and it makes white marks and then when you click out it's mostly gone so again the first time after I clicked out of that circle I had that that kind of ghosty picture uh, the second pass I got rid of it a little bit more and the third it's all the way back it's all the way gone so if I had gone back and done a couple of other sweeps on this picture of the gray stone I think I could have gotten rid of the distortion now the iPhone iPad doesn't have that option however there are free apps that do so I've listed some here Snapseed, PS Express, VSCO, Prisma, Adobe Photoshop Fix and Avery uh, Photo uh, Editor now I've only used the first two and when I was reading I think I'm going to get the Adobe Photoshop Fix but what do they do? They give you all sorts of options. So, oh, the picture is from PS Express. And the particular uh, function that up is up is overlays. And you can see the word overlays there. And I've got all those options. Well, I chose the one that kind of puts these balls of light. And I was just having fun. Uh, I probably wouldn't keep it there. But if you look down below those little thumbnails, you will see you've got a variety of options. And see the um, right about in the middle looks like a Band-Aid? Well, that's Touch Up. And so all of these apps give you the ability to go in and uh, get rid of things in the picture you don't like. Uh, you have to have a fine hand and a steady hand but it's kind of fun to play around with just make sure you duplicate your picture first uh, so you still have the original so again Snapseed, PS Express, VSCO, Prisma, Adobe Photoshop Fix, uh, Avery uh, Photo Editor and if anybody who's watching has used any of those and wants to make comments about their uh, experience with them please do and again any questions you have please Put them in the comments. I can't see the comments, uh, but I'll look at them afterwards. Okay, we're going to end up with markup. And markup is fun because you can personalize your pictures. So if you're on a Mac, laptop, or desktop, you want to look for the circle with the three dots in it. And I've got the red arrow pointing to it. And you click on those three dots. Well, guess what? On the iPad, iPhone, it's the same thing. You're going to look for those three dots. In this case, they're in a filled-in circle. You tap on the three dots. You'll get a couple of choices, but one of them is markup. So when you go get to markup on the Mac, what you will see are these options across the top. And one of them, the T, is text. And so I clicked on text and I wrote the words happy birthday and I choose, chose the color of my uh, font, I chose the size of my font and I gave it a background. So that's kind of fun. Uh, you can see you've got other choices. You can uh, draw with it. You've got shapes. You can... Um, rotate it you can do some cropping so markup if you want to use something for a card or a poster is the perfect place to go in same whoop same thing with um iphone and ipad so when you tap those three circles and you choose markup the first thing you'll see is the like the image on the left You'll see you have different size pens. You'll see there's an eraser, there's a ruler, there's different colors. And if you tap on the plus sign and look over to the right, you will see your options. Again, you can put text, you can put your signature, you can magnify uh, different parts of the picture. You've got shapes and you've got an arrow. Once again, you can use the colors. You just use the eraser to make it uh, go away if you don't like it. 
And so what I did is I simply wrote the word hi. So this would make a nice postcard to send to someone in the fall. The last thing I'm going to show you is the vignette option under adjustments. And I've got an example there. The vignette turns a picture kind of into an old-fashioned image. Do you notice that the corners have darkened? And so it almost is creating an oval frame for the image. And uh, you can uh, control the how much of the corner is, is uh, darkened, how dark it should be. But again, if you want to do something creative with your photos, vignette is a possibility. So, in conclusion, big ideas for today. Use those adjustment tools to do things like brighten your images, deepen your colors, bring the details out, correct exposure, make your photos that are just okay into spectacular photos for yourself and if you want to text them or you want to uh, turn them into a photo that is framed or you're going to do a slideshow, you really want to create the best possible image that you can. And the second thing is remember that you can personalize your photos with markup. So that's it for today. Thank you for coming. Uh, just to remind you that on Saturday we'll be looking at everything that uh, you need to know about uh, albums and the way that the Photos app is organized on the Mac. I always get a lot of questions about this in my adult ed classes, so I suspect some of you also have some questions. So, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now, and then once I do that, uh, the video will stop, and uh, you should be able to go on with your